Undiagnosed knee arthritis is to blame for your painful Baker cysts. A Baker cyst is pain and puffiness or swelling on the back of the knee. It's also called a popliteal cyst because the region in the back of the knee is called a popliteal fossa. So if you have any puffiness or swelling back there, your doctor might tell you that you have a popliteal cyst, but it's most commonly called a Baker cyst. And not everyone experiences knee arthritis the same way. For some people, the first sign they get is actually a Baker cyst, but not everyone in the healthcare profession connects the two. In this video, I'm going to build the case why a Baker cyst is really the beginning of knee osteoarthritis. And the first point I want to make is that both knee arthritis, osteoarthritis, and a Baker cyst have the same root problem. They're both rooted in muscle imbalances. Now the muscle imbalance that is commonly causing this is when the quads right here on the front of the thigh, they start up in the hip and they run down to the knee. Those muscles are too dominant and strong and because of their connections, they compress the knee joint and push all the surfaces together. And if you don't take that pressure off, then bad stuff starts to happen. Some people get cartilage damage, a lot of stiffness, and some people don't get that right away. They eventually get it, but they get a Baker cyst first. And what a Baker cyst is, it's swelling that appears on the back of the knee. It feels like a, like a bubble. It's usually puffy and soft and it can often be very painful. And that happens as a result of an excessive amount of fluid buildup inside the knee that pops out on the back side of the knee because there's no bones in the way like there is in the front. There's a kneecap and other ligaments and other structures. So it's just the easiest space for extra fluid to move into. That excessive fluid development happens as a result of a reaction of the inside of your knee joint to the excessive pressure buildup from that muscle imbalance. When those quad muscles on the front of the thigh that attach to the knee are putting excessive pressure over a sustained period of time, the knee joint has to respond some way. For some people, they get a breakdown of cartilage, meaning knee arthritis, but for other people, their cartilage holds out a bit, but starts to create extra fluid, and that leads to the Baker cyst. In both cases, if you fix the muscle imbalance, then you can begin to take pressure off the knee joint and stop the excessive production of fluid that leads to the Baker cyst, as well as stop the progression of knee arthritis that damages cartilage inside the knee joint. Now, people experience knee arthritis differently. Some get a Baker cyst first, and others get the classic signs of knee arthritis, like stiffness, especially in the morning, or stiffness when they get up after they've been sitting for a while or they may just get swelling that's around the knee joint, but not really on the back. It's more on the inside, the outside, or right in the front of the knee, but they don't really have like a Baker cyst. Like some people get an obvious Baker cyst back here where it is puffy and you can't bend your knee without pushing all that fluid and it's painful. And some people get a Baker cyst and if that Baker cyst isn't controlled properly, that cyst can grow and grow and grow to the point where it ruptures or it pops and all that extra joint fluid sinks down into the calf and now causes problems down in the calf muscle. So you have to equate a Baker cyst with too much pressure in the knee joint and on the inside of the knee joint where there's cells that create the knee joint fluid, also called the synovial fluid, those cells are responding to that extra pressure by building more fluid to cushion the knee and nourish the cartilage inside in an effort to protect itself against that excessive pressure from the muscle imbalance. That root problem must be addressed because if you have too much pressure in the knee joint, it's just a matter of which part of the knee is going to break down first. Some people don't get a Baker cyst or the classic knee arthritis symptoms, they get a meniscus problem. Some people get really bad kneecap problems and they call it patellofemoral pain syndrome, or they talk about chondromalacia patella, which is the kneecap cartilage on the back thinning out and wearing down. All of these conditions are rooted in too much pressure going through the knee joint for a very long time, months or years, or in some cases, decades. It's just that some people damage their meniscus first, some people damage their kneecap cartilage, some people the cartilage in the thigh bone, and some people get the Baker cyst on the back. The common treatment for a Baker cyst is draining it. Very often, if you go to the doctor and you have a big old puffy Baker cyst, they will offer to aspirate it, which is the medical term for draining it. They'll put a needle in there and they'll suck out the extra fluid so that you can bend your knee better and feel a little better when you move around, when you walk. The problem with this is it's only short-term help. 
because if that muscle imbalance is not fixed, if there continues to be an excessive amount of pressure going through the knee joints, then it's just a matter of time before your cells inside your knee joints that have been creating all that extra fluid keep working, keep doing their job and build up the fluid again. You see, doctors don't really have a good long-term solution. However, I'm not saying that draining it is a bad idea. I'm just saying if that's your only solution for fixing your Baker cyst or your knee arthritis problem, then you need to look a little bit deeper. But it may be beneficial for you if that Baker cyst feels like it's about to pop or you're very concerned you're not getting any control over it, then going to get it drained might be a good idea because it's going to buy you some time to figure out how to fix the muscle imbalance before it ruptures and you have worse problems or your knee arthritis just really begins to get out of control. Let me tell you about our approach to helping a Baker cyst or a knee arthritis situation. It is critically important for you to reduce the pressure inside that knee joint to begin to calm down the surfaces inside the knee joint and tell the cells that are creating too much pressure to cool it, to stop creating so much fluid so that your Baker cyst isn't getting any bigger and your knee joint isn't becoming more irritated. Now, there's a process to this and at the heart of the process is fixing that muscle imbalance. And one of the key muscles to get stronger is gonna be the glutes up in the hip back here. If you can get your glutes stronger the right way, then it can calm down your quad muscles on the front, which will take the pressure off your knee joint. And the trick is to maintain proper muscle balance over time so that you can keep that Baker cyst from getting bigger and bigger and eventually popping and affecting your calf muscles and even your foot. Now it's important to note, if you have a Baker cyst, a notable Baker cyst already developed, it's probably not gonna change in appearance, meaning you're always gonna probably have a little bump. So it's not the right expectation to say, I'm gonna make that go away by doing the correct fix. What's a better expectation is I'm gonna make sure that the pain isn't there, that I'm not limited in my motion or that I have as much motion as I'm gonna be able to get and that it's not getting worse because it's out of control. If you can fix your muscle imbalance, feel better, walk around better, move better, do the things that you love to do and have confidence that your Baker cyst is not growing in size, and that is an enormous win for your Baker cyst and your knee arthritis problem in the long term. I've got a program called the Knee Arthritis Recovery Program. And if you've got a Baker cyst just developing, or maybe you've had one for a while, but you haven't really been told that you have knee arthritis yet, then this program is something that you need to start immediately so that it doesn't turn into full-blown knee arthritis and so that your Baker cyst can get under control. If you've got a Baker cyst, you've pretty much got to tell yourself, I have the beginning stages of knee arthritis and you need to treat it as such. And we've got videos for free here on our channel. They're linked in the description below for the Baker cysts problem specifically. We've also got a playlist of all our knee arthritis videos, but I strongly suggest you check out our knee arthritis recovery program if you've got a Baker cyst. That program is a comprehensive program in being able to fix that muscle imbalance I'm talking about and making sure that you get the recovery that you're looking for so that your Baker cyst problem doesn't get any worse and of course doesn't turn into full-fledged knee osteoarthritis. I hope this video was insightful for you. I hope you learned a bit. And go check out those videos on Baker cysts as well as knee arthritis so that you can learn more about how we treat these problems. Thanks so much for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of the videos that we put out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.